So today, um, this is called the Body Love Broadcast, and I feel really passionate about this because, um, well, it all started. I had this download um, the other night after I posted this really, really powerful, inspirational post of Dr. Lauren Lacks um, of her journey and her recovery and her stepping in her power and now serving and helping other women that struggle with body dysmorphia, eating disorder. And I've spoken to Hannah, Hannah Lebrun. Um, she actually works for uh, our company and she's been through our programs and she shared her story of overcoming um, binge eating in less than three days after coming through our training. And we just talked a lot about it. And I've also spoken to so many women from my past and women that I love that are now really empowered around their body. And I just thought it was something that we need to talk about because yeah. for me, it was the underlying program and issue that was always running on in the background of pretty much all the destructive behavior that I did in the past. And so I know that from my journey was super isolating. And I know that you said it as well, mm -hmm. feeling isolated and that nobody else knew what you're going through. And that's a really scary and very um, sad place to be. And yeah. so- my hope by doing this is bringing awareness to it. It's also empowering through the stories of success, um, sharing um, our knowledge and our wisdom around it and helping us all to create a healthy um, way that we show up as women, way that we stand in our power and accept ourselves, every single itch of our body, every single thing about us, all the quirkiness and all the strange things. We're all beautiful blue, uh, we're all beautiful snowflakes. We're all gorgeous inside and out. And so that is the purpose behind this. And so um, thank you so much for joining us. And I wanna introduce this amazing woman. I'm gonna stop talking now <laughs> after I introduce her because she's <laughs> incredible. And I want, I want her to take the stage and just tell us about your story. Um, she is pretty much a badass. <laughs> she has won two bikini um, competitions, Bikini Pro. You are also a vegan bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. um, she's a published author, also speaker. Uh, she's also a professional actress and model. And she is also our in-house master coach, soon to be trainer for Jaeger Training. And she's like our lethal weapon behind the scenes. <laughs> I don't know what I would do without this woman. Oh, I'm so grateful yeah. for everything that you've done for me and my life, as well as just working with you. And I just, I'm so proud of you and I'm so honored to work a side of you and just be a part of your life. So thank you. I'm honored to be working with y'all too. It's been a dream. So tell me, so tell me just when did it all start for you? Like tell me your journey and we're gonna talk about that. So just just tell me wherever you just want to drop in. So I want to drop in to a pretty powerful time. I was nine years old and we had just gone to the kite festival at Zilker Park in Austin. And I told up or looked up to a parent and told them, I want to go on a diet. And I remember her saying, well, I don't see why you have muscle. I was a gymnast at the time and I was very athletic. I was exercising five times a week at the gym. Um, and for some reason, I just got this programming, this idea that the thickness in my biceps and my lats and my quads was, it jiggled so it was fat and it needed to go. So that's kind of when everything started. And then, you know, it's like a roller coaster up and down. It would, there would be times that I would maybe pass out from not eating. There would be times I just wouldn't eat because I didn't want to eat by myself or I wouldn't want anyone to see me eat dessert. That was like the worst thing is having people look at me eating. Um, so many weird little things, but I never thought of it as a problem. I thought of it as this is just the way I am. This is just the way all women are. And I would wear shorts and uh, couldn't wear a bikini without wearing shorts. And it just got worse in high school, so. Uh, there was a point I got a hold of hydroxycut, tried to, when I was underage, and I uh, would gag on Slim Fast, and my friends would just be so, like, curious and just, like, confused, like, why are you doing this? And people would tell me, they'd be like, Hannah, you look great. Hannah, you have a, an amazing body. You have a perfect body. 
And then when I met you, um, after doing bodybuilding and after my first show, or in the prep for my first show, I actually even threw up in a park. And that was one of the lowest times in my life. Um, just having uh, being at a potluck with like a vegan potluck and just I like, couldn't stop eating. I couldn't stop eating and I had to go make myself throw up. That's how sick I felt. And just the shame and embarrassment I felt. So when you asked me about my health and we were talking about a business consult consult session, I just started crying. And I think that was when I was ready. I was like, I think it's, I'm ready to, to fix this problem. And you're the person I know that can help me. Hmm. So tell me, so what do you, from now doing the work, you know, we did the work in the training and doing work after that, you know, um, doing coaching and also working with other women, where do you think that it really started? Because we know that, yes, at, it was 10 years, nine years old, nine years old, there was that thought in your mind. Yeah. But what was the root cause for it? Like, what was the, who were you modeling and what was that programming like as a child? Or do you think it even started before that? Oh, yeah. Do you think it was passed down? I mean, I, there were things that happened in my genealog genealogical uh, timeline that, you know, my grandma, great-grandma great went through trauma. Um, during timeline therapy, I let go of a lot of hurt that she had. Um, By the way, just to let you guys know, timeline therapy is a really powerful modality that allows us to go back on our in ancestral timeline as well as past lives. If you believe in such thing, you can do work in the womb and also this lifetime. So you can uncover blocks and release negative emotions and mm -hmm. limiting beliefs and decisions, patterns, programs that are not serving us. Right. So, um, so yeah, I think it was passed down through that and I heard programming growing up that fat was disgusting, fat was bad. Um, just seeing all the images in the media were like stick thin women or very lean women. And to me, as an athlete, as a gymnast um, competing, I, I kind of, you know, I would see those images of women and compare myself. And I would think, why don't, why am I short in like, um, what's the, like more bulky? Why am I short and bulky? Why can't I be tall and lean? Like the models, you know, everyone looks up to runway models. And uh, I just started comparing myself that way. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't just the body fat. It was other, other types of issues too. Like I thought my ribs were too big. Um, I was a slow developer uh, in puberty, so I felt a lot of shame that I felt behind and my ribs poked out a lot, but I didn't have a chest. And so I would actually push my ribs up against the table and, you know, the science class tables are really heavy duty. So I would push my ribs up and like tell people I'm trying to break my ribs so that they'll be smaller. And different weird little things like that. Um, I took pills to try to make my breasts grow. I looked into plastic surgery and I would tell, I would tell friends that I was going to get lipo as soon as I turned 18. And like, I'm the heaviest I've ever weighed right now. So if you can imagine, um, what, what was your weight back then? Oh, I mean, when I was on stage, I was 113 pounds at my leanest. And how tall are you? Five foot three. Wow. Yeah. Before that, I was like 120, 125, and I would always hover around there. Now I'm around 130. Yeah. Um, and you're so beautiful. Thank you. I feel beautiful now. Yeah. I remember the same thing for me. Um, I modeled after models. And so I used to have these runway model pictures of women, you know, all over my walls and also MTV models and singers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would get this, like this idea of what was perfection. Mm -hmm. And then anything that was not that, which of course our bodies are all unique. And so anything that wasn't exactly that, then I would pick apart literally down to the minute details, whether it be the hands, the feet, the wrist size, the knees, the way they're shaped, the muscles, like my calves were never right. I remember wearing shoes that were too small for me because I was embarrassed of my feet. And I used to think oh, my yeah. My feet were ugly and I had snaggle toes. I thought my feet were too big. Yes. 
Yes. And my, I would always cover up my ears. I still do. I cover up my ears because I thought they were like these huge elf ears. And um, yeah, I mean, the list would go on of like certain imperfections that I would find that wasn't this perfect oh. model gorgeousness. And I would pick myself apart. Yeah. Yeah. That reminds me, um, my sister would take me shopping for pants. And I didn't like the inner curve of my thigh. Oh, so I was, I was like, I can't wear pants to show the inner top curve of my thigh. And my sister was like, Hannah, everybody has that. Like, please just buy a pair of pants. And it would take so long for me to find a pair that like kind of, you know, was a little bit less uh, tight right there. Um, just because yeah. I had all these weird little... Things. Me too. The same thing with thighs. Cause my, my thighs are, I would, I would compare myself also to with my mother because, um, she has a different build than me. She has uh, different hips and she has skinnier, skinnier upper torso. And I remember trying on her wedding dress. I don't know how old I was probably like 10 or 11 and my ribs are bigger. And I used to wish that my ribs, my ribs were smaller. And I modeled also, which is very interesting, off of the cartoon character of The Little Mermaid. And of course, it's not even a real body. It doesn't even make sense. But that was the what, neck is the same size yes, as the waist. Yes, like, it's insane. But that's what I thought was perfection. I remember yeah. watching um, Dirty Dancing when I was a little girl, and like putting the you know the padded bra on and stuffing my bras. And mm -hmm. I used to think baby was fat I used to think she was fat I wanted to be the other really skinny one. Oh my gosh yes it's just it's nuts it's what we sister. do and this is all inside of our head yeah. and this is a programming that young women are in you know creating and this is before social media yeah so I can't even imagine it's what worse these, now yeah because people there's so much retouching and editing and there's apps. Anyone can get on their phone to slim their face and slim their and like their you know torso. remove the wrinkles and make themselves look like a doll. I mean, um, you know, we can talk about uh, plastic surgery in one of these episodes. I mean, I, I, right or wrong, I don't. It's whoever you know. The reasoning behind why you get it is is up to the person if that makes that person yeah. feel beautiful. But there's some people I think that it's can become an addiction and it's it's unhealthy if it, if you're always trying to um, get more or that hit or whatever that is getting we're searching outside of ourselves for what we need to find inside. Yeah. So. And that's that was the thing about bodybuilding is the first show I. I had all these people say like, do you do bodybuilding? Um, you have the right proportions. You should try it. And then after working at Gold's Gym, you know, I'm surrounded by bodybuilders and fitness models. I see them in the gym every day. It just started, got my wheels turning. Like, you know what? It'd be pretty amazing to do. Cause I felt at a pretty good place with my body, but there was a small part of me that was doing it for the wrong reasons. And then my second show was definitely not for the right reasons. I wanted to, get a free trip to Brazil. I wanted to lose the weight I gained during Christmas, which was really like four pounds. Um, but I remember like right before I met you, I went to the gym like before Christmas and I just saw my reflection in the mirror and I just started crying. Like I couldn't work out because every time I saw a mirror, I started crying because I was like, Oh my, I gained like five pounds after my show, which is totally normal. And for me, it looked like 30. Oh yeah. And I just was like, oh my God, I ruined four and a half months of hard work. I ruined it in a month. And, um, and most likely it was this water bloatation. Usually yeah. a lot of times, well, I mean, when you're binging and you're eating like, you know, 7,000 calories in a the day and not moving there, you're going to put on the pounds. But a lot of times I know that when I would binge for long periods of time, it was just water bloatation. And I would just, I remember looking at myself in the mirror, my belly, like all swollen, my legs all swollen, my mm -hmm. arms, my face, my neck would just swell up with water. It was also the abuse that I was doing to myself. And I would just be like, you're so fucking disgusting. And I would just like cry and just lock myself away. And then I would take a whole bunch of stimulants. And then I would go work out until my heart was beating out of my chest when I was taking like tons of Adderall and sometimes cocaine and mm -hmm. sometimes meth, whatever I could get to get slim again. And, and 
it was just this destructive up and down. And a lot of women, it's like this checks and balances. We're constantly, every time that we eat, we're thinking about, oh my gosh, I'm going to gain weight. And so it's like, okay, so how can I counteract that with overworking out or starving myself? Or I even know um, some people that will like binge eat and then um, go and do a fast, you know, and it's, I mean, if it's strategic and you're doing a cheat day, yes, but be careful about the mindset behind it. Are you beating yourself while, are you beating yourself up while you're eating the food? Because yeah. there's consciousness injected oh, yeah. into the food and our cells are listening to every single thought that we're thinking when we're doing these things. Oh my God. There was so much guilt. Yeah. And every time I ate a sweet or like processed food, so much guilt. Um, I should say though, too, that my binging actually it didn't start until like after my second show and I was already enrolled in the course so was there binging before the show there was emotional eating okay so I was eating too much describe that what's the difference because I think we need to know yeah so uh, emotional eating or anxious eating um was happening because I was trying to you know work with a coach very little and all of a sudden, like she kind of disappeared and I didn't have a coach and I had to find one. So um, I think I was anxious about a lot of things going on in my life. And at the end of the day, I would just, I would eat the calories that I had burned in my exercise. So I wasn't binging, but I was overeating and I uh, wasn't going to make progress for my show. So I was getting myself to say stagnant. Um, cause I was still like burning off four to 600 calories from my workouts. Um, after my show, that's kind of when shit hit the fan. <laughs> um, I had already, thank God she helped me win, um, and get my ideal outcome, which is so amazing. And after that, um, things just kind of spiraled out of control. I was stressed about money. I was stressed about my business and where it was going and, was kind of having a value shift and didn't know didn't know what that was or how to handle it and that's when the binging began so binging was eating to the point where I felt sick and I literally felt out of control of my body so uh, I felt like my body was just going back to the kitchen I would binge on <laughs> like like I felt like a possessed robot yeah, exactly. and my body would just mix up I literally <laughs> I would binge on oats, oats and peanut butter uh, and like coconut uh, sugar. Like it's not even tasty. It's not even tasty. The stuff that you put in your mouth. You're like, nah, I can't stop. I just couldn't stop. I was, yeah. And so I would have to go take a sleeping pill mm. so that I would, I was like, well, if I take a sleeping pill, I'm going to have to fall. I'm going to just fall asleep and then I'll stop eating. So it was bad. And I was trying, I would try to like figure out what's the trigger, what's the trigger. You know, I didn't know how to communicate with my unconscious. I didn't, I didn't know. So what was the I process? Trauma. Yeah. But then we, we, so we get to the training and honestly, I was like, I think I'm so past help. Yeah. I'm so past the point of anyone being able to help me. I was, I'm probably going to cry, but like, I was in such a bad place. Like I was so depressed the week of my show, like, I could barely get out of bed. I did my workouts and then just laid in bed the rest of the day. Um, so depressed, so lonely, so isolated, so lost. Felt like such a fraud. I'm here as a vegan nutrition and fitness coach, and I can't even handle my own health. And it was, it felt horrible. And then going to the training, I was like, I'm scared. Like, I don't know if they'll be able to fix me. Um but I was like, I'm still going to go. I'm still going to show up and do what I can. And uh, by day three, I was, I still kind of um, emotionally ate after day two, but after day three, I was actually like no urge. Like we let go of um, all these negative emotions from past traumas. I didn't even know were in my body that were stored in my body from being in the womb I found out something about what happened um, when I was in the womb and 
that was craziness. <laughs> and yeah, after that, I was like wearing dresses and skipping the last day and like so happy. And everyone was like, there's Hannah. I remember you the first three days of the training. Um, she was wearing all black. Um, she was yeah. wearing all athletic gear. Like the, the energy was completely different. And then day three, four, it was just a complete transformation shift. Yeah. What was like the turning point for you? Like what was the the one thing, the big aha moment for you that just allowed it to dissolve if there was one or was it a combination of things? So it was parts integration was the, was the, like that let go of the binge eating and then letting go of rage. Yeah. Let go of the emotional eating. I remember, so we do uh, anger, sadness, fear, hurt, and guilt mm -hmm. um, during the timeline therapy process. And um, <laughs> Brandon and I forgot to talk about rage. Usually we always remember because some people don't resonate with anger. They have rage. Yeah. And Hannah was one of those. And so uh, <laughs> she was talking to Carl, or, um, Carl another trainer and <laughs> a coaching assistant at the time. And he's like, what did you say to him? I said, <laughs> Carl, I, I think there's like an emotion I didn't let go of. And he was like, okay, well, what was it? I was like, well, I think it might be rage. And he was like, well, well, yeah, that's what it is then. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> he was like, yeah, that's your unconscious talking to you. Like, that means you need to let go of rage. Let's go take care of it. And I was like, oh, that's so easy. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't realize um, how like there's, so many of us are taught to like tune out of what our body's telling us. Tell me about the things that you tried before that you found could have been successful, but that weren't necessarily successful for, I know you also said that you were also bulimic as well. Did you, did you share that? There were times, yeah, I would throw up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when I was 13, I got the idea it was okay to throw up sometimes and, mm. um, to no, to no judgment of anyone that gave me this idea, I want to say that we're all doing the best we can, the resources we have available. And I don't hold any resentment for anyone that gave me the ideas that influenced my behavior. I want to say that. And um, so once I, once I got that idea, I would put it into practice. Sometimes I felt like I ate too much and I would force myself to throw up. So um, for, it wouldn't ever happen really more than three or four times a year. Like, I think there might've been a few years, maybe it happened once or less. So it wasn't something like, you know, you go online and you research, do I have bulimia or something? And it's like, bulimia is when you throw up after every meal. And, and I'm like, it's well, that's not, cases. that's not me. And then they show body dysmorphia. It's like body dysmorphia is when you think you're 500 pounds when you're really a hundred pounds. And, and I was it, like, well, that's not me. So I must not have any of these problems. And that's the sad thing. I mean, again, let's stay away from labeling, you know, the behavior. And it's still, if you're picking yourself apart, if you feel like you're fat and you are weighing a beautiful 130 or weighing a beautiful 160 that I weigh right now, there's something there to investigate. And if you feel the need to throw up after you eat too much, there's something there to investigate, whether you're doing it all the time or you know, or every three months. Yeah. There's something there that could be a huge breakthrough. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's not, it's, it's not loving you for who you are. Right. Right. And it's having shame when you're consuming food and you can't have negative emotions when you're trying to nourish your body. Same thing when you exercise, if you're trying, if you're doing something that's going to benefit your health, feeling negative emotions going to counteract that whether you like it or not. I know. I mean, I working out for me was purely out of survival. I mean, it wasn't coming from a place of, oh, I want to be healthy. It was coming because I want to look a certain way. And if I don't look a certain way, yeah. then I am not worthy. Like I literally- Or punish yourself. Exactly. I decided somewhere in my life that anything that isn't perfection is disgusting and scary and nobody's going to want me and nobody's mm -hmm. going to love me. And so that was the only thing that I could hold on to, to create my self-worth. And then when that, anything that was outside of that was dangerous and it was, it was, <laughs> it was literally- <clears throat> 
it was literally like, if I didn't have it, I might as well be dead for me. And so that was the source of a lot of my pain. It's crazy. Yeah. The things like women go through. I was actually, I was at a meeting in LA and we were talking about um, having shame towards our bodies and like our body dysmorphia. And um, they're just asking, has anyone ever felt any feelings like that? And uh, like, there were two men, there were like five women. The men didn't know what it meant. No, there are some men that suffer with it. There are, but when you like pull a large group, a lot of them don't understand. And all the women were like, they were all of them raised their hand. Yes. Hell yes. I felt that. Hell yes. I felt inadequate or shame about my body or appearance. And it's just crazy. We need to change it. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's sex porn that we see and porn. I mean, like a, um, this is a, a lot of it in our face all the time. You see commercials and all the TV is in Hollywood isn't, I mean, and again, it's everything. It's like looking at it from all sides of it. Um, though there's a lot of marketing, there's so, everybody knows sex sells. And so women are objectified. And I say that in a a loose way because I mean, for, for many, many years, I made a lot of money off of it and <laughs> I enjoyed it. And I loved people telling me that I was beautiful and that I was sexy and I was hot. And I got a lot, I was very, I still have vanity. I think a lot of women do. I don't know anybody that doesn't have some level of vanity. Um, though as women, I feel like it is so ingrained in our culture and even more because the way of power in most cultures, because it was a patriarchal society, women had to use their bodies to manipulate, to get power mm -hmm. a lot of times and objectify themselves in order to have a say. I mean, it was, it's the oldest gig that there is, is being a sex worker or a courtesan or, um, mm -hmm. and so that is like passed down. And then we have the modern day version of it, which is, um, you know, the modeling and stuff like that. And, and of course there's empowerment in all areas of life. I, I want to, you know, give that, you know, talk about that right now. I mean, there are women that are doing sex working um, now that are empowered by it. There's strippers out there that are empowered by it. Um, there was a time in my life that I was empowered by it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just when it becomes something that you need in order to feel validated in your existence. That's what, that was what it was for me. I needed to feel perfect and to be idolized and to feel beautiful and sexy and perfect to validate my existence as a human being. Mm -hmm. And we're not just our bodies. Our bodies are a beautiful vessel. They're a gift from the divine, Yeah. but we are so much more than that. Yeah. And it becomes a dangerous game. Yes, it does. When you, cause then what happens if a man rejects you? Yeah. It crushes you. It completely. crushes you. I was, I would feel so crushed if, someone wasn't attracted to me like <sighs> yeah do you want to talk about yeah our partners oh okay what we do or do you want to or how we project under our partners oh yeah 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 so um it affects men too it affects men too so one of the things I would do in all my relationships and my present relationship is that because of this perfectionism that I had for myself and how I was beating myself up because I didn't look a certain way and I didn't feel good enough and da 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 da, da the feedback loop. So then I would project my energy on my partner. So every time I would get in a relationship in the beginning, I had these like rosy goggles of what um, the perfect man was and I would see that person for that. And then as we stripped back the layers of our relationship, then I started going and nitpicking and literally I did this to Brandon in the beginning and we've done a lot of work around it and we've um, solved and like really talked about it and I've changed my behavior, but I used to find something wrong with his legs or his chest or his neck or something. And I would pick him apart because it was a way for me to feel control. And I would compare myself and I would say, Ooh, I'm better than him in this way. Mm -hmm. And then I would tell myself a story to where usually I'm not in our relationship now because we decided to get married. We're staying together forever. Cause I love him to pieces inside <laughs> and out. I love that man. He's so amazing. Um, but in the past, 
I would find something wrong and then I would start searching it somewhere else. And it was this feedback loop pattern that I did with every single person in my life because it was easier to look outside than in because I was already doing it to myself and I was already shaming myself. The way to numb myself was to project it on onto someone else. Yeah. So then we maybe treat them <laughs> differently for their appearance. And I kind of feel bad about my, one of my relationships. I would like start, I would start to feel more insecure because I was thinking he has, he has to tell me I'm attractive. He has to tell me I'm beautiful and gorgeous. And I just, as we stayed, the longer we were together, the more insecure I got about my body. Mm. It was really weird. And then, because at first I'm like, oh my God, he loves my body. Oh my God, I am hot. I am gorgeous. And then after year one, after year two, after year three, it's like going down. And then I was like, look away. He would take his shirt off and it crushed him mm. and, and I knew I was doing it but it was my own insecurity with myself and I projected it onto him and it was not nice yeah there's all kinds of patterns and these are more topics that we're going to talk about in further um episodes of this so I want to turn it back around so where was so what so where was the turning point for you and like, what was the strategy behind it? So let's talk about solutions yeah. of how we can give our listeners definitely um, something that they could take away right now to start implementing and changing and shifting this inside of us to where we can love ourselves from the inside out. Yes. So letting go of the past trauma, the past significant emotional event, if the word trauma doesn't resonate with you. It's one and the same with our, how our body processes it and really letting go of those past limiting beliefs of what, what does beauty look like? What does fitness look like? What does being healthy look like? Challenge the programming that you're seeing in the media and this, that you're seeing in the mainstream uh, news. And there's also action steps too. So we've talked about you know, if you aren't responsible with the mirror, <laughs> take it away. Oh my gosh. Take away the mirror. If it's a trigger, sometimes, um, and I've told clients this, but sometimes it's best to take a break from something if you don't feel you can control yourself. So maybe stop buying bulk chocolate chips if you can't control yourself right now. That doesn't mean in the future you won't be able to keep them at home. But right now, just take a little break. So taking a break from, um, I went on a whole unfollowing spree. So when I decided I didn't want to do bodybuilding anymore, I started unfollowing all those competitors and you have to be relentless and, um, unabashedly, you know, focus on the, what, what are the thoughts going on in your head and how can you be more in control of those? And that's by what you see, the pictures you see. So unfollow the things that, you know, aren't healthy programming for you. Unfollow um, diet culture. If, if that's not something that, if you want to get a healthier relationship with food, stop following the things that are like, you can't eat this, you can't eat that. <laughs> this has 20 calories. It's feeding the monster. Right. Stop feeding the monster. Mm -hmm. And maybe get a coach, you know, if you've never done this before. I found her. Thank God. <laughs> she changed my life. And who knows where I'd be if I hadn't met her because I was such a, like in such a dark place. And um, hypnosis, so affirmations, you know, looking at mirror work is one tool, looking at yourself in the mirror. And uh, there's, I could go on and on, but um, really just focusing on yourself, your relationship with yourself, you know, doing your makeup, if that makes you feel good, doing the things that make you feel good. Like I found, I love to do yoga and I love to do um, different kinds of exercise besides weightlifting. And I, I was noticing that when I would weightlift, I felt like I was taking out my anger on the weights and I was just overdoing it. So I'm kind of, you know, going easy on that and I'm letting go of my idea of what it means to be strong, what it means to be fit. Anything else? Um, watch your language. Watch how you're talking about other people. Watch how you're talking about yourself. So when someone gives you a compliment, say thank you. 
I appreciate it. Um, don't talk bad about yourself. Don't say, oh, I look fat in this. Or someone compliments your hair and you're like, oh, it looks horrible today. Say thank you. Like, remember your unconscious mind is always listening. So you want to be kind to it. And she reminds me of that too. When I say something negative, she's like, be nice to your unconscious mind. <laughs> thank you, unconscious mind. Thank you. Your unconscious mind is the intelligence of your body, by the way. So she is listening. Mm -hmm. So she's listening to every word that you say. I know that when we first moved to Austin, I purposely didn't have a mirror because it was, I mean, this, by the way, this whole thing has happened this whole broadcast has happened because I feel like I finally got over my body image issues. Woo! Finally, after so many years, even after I did the training, it wasn't something that I was really focused on. I had some other stuff I needed to work through, but there was still that underlying pattern that was still plaguing me. And I found myself, um, you know, still binging sometimes. And um, I still had negative self-talk and, I was afraid to wear bathing suits and I didn't like to get on camera, all the things. Yeah. And oh. yeah. Oh my gosh. And if it wasn't, if it wasn't my physical body, then it had to do with something with my face, you know, like, oh, you know, my nose is funny this way. Or oh yeah, I thought about I would say I was getting a nose job. Yeah. It's crazy. Because it's always something. Oh, I looked into getting um, my gums lasered off. I looked into getting my because I have a droopy eye which everyone, most, most everyone has, has uneven. We eyes. always have our good side and our <laughs> bad side that we don't like to let people see. <laughs> I have a dog scar. <laughs> Thought about getting taken care of. I don't know. Yeah. yeah and it, it's, it's funny because even if you did get it fixed, then it would be something else, you know? Right. So it's yeah. just interesting. <laughs> The, um, the mirror detox was uh, tremendous for me because we went, I don't know how long I decided not to have a mirror. Um, I had a mirror to, you know, brush my teeth and stuff like that, but it wasn't a full body mirror. And it really helped me like pause a bit of just noticing, like I almost felt like withdrawals in the beginning. And I would like find myself, oh my gosh, every time I would go somewhere and it was in public, then I would like excuse myself to go to the bathroom. So <laughs> go to the bathroom and check myself out. I'm like, oh, <laughs> or like either it was like, oh, I look so hot or it's, oh, you look like shit. <laughs> yeah. It was like always the extreme. Yeah. The yeah. extreme, either extreme vanity or extreme shame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so over the last, I don't know. And, the, and for me, the, um, the one that really put the seal on it was just some of the Instagram videos that I've been doing, like no makeup and just like showing up and just being me and the raw and the real and, you know, um, putting on bathing suits, like I hid from it. And, you know, I'm telling you this as an NLP trainer that, you know, I sit there and say personal growth and development, but it was something that I was still working on. And now I, I feel free of it. I've accepted myself. I love myself. I freaking love my well, roles. I, I love do want to say though, <laughs> I want to say though, this is one of those topics that's kind of an uphill battle because of how much we're surrounded by, you know, different beliefs. Like you have to look a certain way to be beautiful looks this way, beautiful looks that way. So when it's like constantly going into our minds, it's, we have to be super conscious and aware of saying, I reject it. No, delete, delete. I'm not listening to that. Yep. And you have to be so strong in those belief systems you create. And that's why I think NLP is so powerful because you can reprogram all of that crap that's leading to those unhealthy behaviors. Yeah. And letting go of the need of being perfect. Yeah. Um, I finally shifted that, I think about a year and a half ago, just because if it wasn't after I left the, the stripping and all that stuff, then it was the perfection of the mind. And so I focused, I was like, screw the body. And so I rejected it. And then, um, and I would still beat myself up because it was the underlying pattern, but then I like put all my energy in my mind and then nitpicked apart if I wasn't perfect in that sense. And so yeah. eventually I said, I had enough of this perfection bullshit because it doesn't freaking exist. No. There is no perfect. There is yeah. no perfect. And it's all an illusion in our mind. And even when I won first place, I still saw in the mirror, I was like, man, I shouldn't have like my second show. I thought I shouldn't have won. 
I wasn't as lean as my first show. I'm embarrassed by my figure. I won a, my second pro card and I still felt shame about my body. In the first show, when I won my first pro card, I, I remember looking in the bathroom before, you know, I went on and I was looking, I was like, man, my deltoids aren't big enough. Man, my thighs are still kind of thick. Like, I won the show and I was told, not just that, but I was told by the judges, you are the new standard for this sport. Wow. Like, that's an honor. Yeah. And I mean, I owe it a lot to my genetics and gymnastics. Like, that was where my muscle development happened. So, I'm not going to say I started from scratch and, you know, just like I won because I've been working on this for five to 10 years, like a lot of pros do. Um, well, it's a never, the never yeah. enough paradigm that is so installed into us, or maybe mm -hmm. it's a part of us. I mean, like the unconscious mind, one of the prime directives is uh, um, always seeking more and more. And so it's like that underlying thing that there's never enough, which can be good because it could be a driving force of us creating and um, producing results and um, climbing, climbing success at the same time, our personal evolution as a human being mm -hmm. at the same time, if it's taken into, you know, addictive behavior, which all the things that we've been talking about are pretty much addictions in a sense, and they can be solved. It's not a dis-ease in my opinion, in my humble opinion, it's behavior acting out because there's some underlying issue um, that hasn't been resolved and learned from. And once it's learned from, it can disappear. Yeah. So I have homework for them. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. One, first of all, I want you to do a media audit. So I want you to start focusing, maybe write it down, maybe do an audio, just note what media are you listening to, hearing, seeing, feeling, um, during the week, Instagram, Facebook, TV, I don't care from where, I want you to pay attention to what the messaging is. Mm. What are you seeing and how does it make you feel? Second, I want you to make a list as long as you possibly can, take 30 minutes to write it, of what you love about your body, your mind, your spirit, all of it. It's all encompassing. Write about what you love and really feel those feelings and keep it. Keep it up in your room somewhere. So if you ever do feel down, you're going to go through that list and you're going to remember how amazing and beautiful you are just the way you are and how many amazing attributes you do have. Ooh, I love that. Mm -hmm. I think it'll help. Yeah, I agree. Cool. So do we have any um, comments? Let's check the questions. So we're going to go over here. We say have hi ladies. This is awesome. Hi ladies. So it doesn't look like we have questions. So if you're watching the replay, um, how do we get back to Zoom? He's zooming over here. Wait. Again? Where'd it go? Click there. Oh, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> if you're ever watching the replay, go ahead, put your questions. Or if you come back to this video, put your questions and we'll answer them for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thank you so much. I am so happy that you came on. Is there anything else that you want to say, like any tips or like one, one, what is one juicy nugget that the ladies can take away or men that can take away and implement in their life that will shift everything? Um, what I'm getting, what I'm getting right now is that remember the pictures that you see aren't the whole story. It's just a tiny little, it reminds me when I went to um, New York with my friend Camelia. We, we went to Ellis, or like we went to the Statue of Liberty and we were walking around and, um, or maybe it was before that, I don't know, there was a part, we were looking at New York and we couldn't see the buildings because it's like, it's all linear. So we can only see the first few. I'm like, where is New York? What the heck? How are there all these buildings? Like, why can't we see them? And then we like walk a few miles and then we get to where we're like, we're headed. And then uh, we end up at Rockefeller Center at one point. And then you can see the sea of buildings like stretching so far. And that's what I want you to think of when, when you see pictures on Instagram or pictures on the media, like you're getting one tiny, tiny piece of what really went on to that photo 
what really went on in the behind the scenes because there were so many times that like people thought my life was amazing and I had the perfect body in those stage shots they didn't know that I was depressed they didn't know that I wasn't having my cycle they didn't know that I wasn't eating and or you know eating healthy and thinking healthy thoughts and I wasn't happy you know there's so much that goes on and it's so easy like that to make edits. Um, so just remember that, remember that everything is not what, what you think it is. Yeah, and those photos, those women may not be happy. Or it could be- it Or could they be, could be happy, who knows? Yeah. They could be super confident and feeling amazing and they could not be happy too. But 15 to 20 hours of exercise a week is what I was doing. Yeah. 15 to 20. And that doesn't include um, the time I spent meal prepping or posing practice. Um, you know, that's 30 hours a week I dedicated to win and to, to get that look. And it's temporary. Like it's meant to be a peak, like a day. That's why they call it peak week. And then you're, you want to time everything. So you're stepping on stage at your leanest and most dry cut. So it's not healthy. It's not sustainable. And for 99% of people, and that shouldn't be a goal people try to attain. Be the best, most healthy version of you. Mm -hmm. Long-term. I mean. Long-term, long-term. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much. I'm so honored to have you on. And this is going to be more of this. Um, I had a whole bunch of just downloads of different ideas and topics that I want to talk about with you specifically. So this is going to be an ongoing thing. So please um, comment if you have any ideas or anything specifically you want to hear about. Um, we would love to rift about it. And I'm going to have on a whole bunch of other experts who have um, really overcome this story and mm -hmm. become empowered and that have healed from their journey. Um, and so we're going to keep it going. So thank you so much. I appreciate everybody joining you. Love you all. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.